All right, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at versing a linked list. If you don't know what a linked list is, um, well, you should, but that's okay. Um, so in this problem, you have a list here, so one, two, three, four, five. But what we're going to do is, as we iterate over there, we're going to change a few pointers around and try and get the list in the reverse order. Remember, in a singly linked list, which is what this type is, the one we're implementing, uh, one, it's a, uh, we don't have reference to the tail. We only have reference to the head. Uh, so we're going to need to be implementing a push and a pop operation in order to push on four, and then three, and then two, and then one. Uh, second thing to note is in a linked list, it's technically a kind of recursive data structure. So in Rust, uh, we don't have any uh, in order for the compiler in Rust to actually know the size of this structure, um, you need to define uh, it in terms of uh, pointers. So that's why we have this box here, box list node. Uh, there are other types of smart pointers, um, things like reference counters, ref cells. Uh, we won't be getting into any of those. Uh, but uh, yeah, so just for this particular problem, one way to consider it is... Uh, as we look at this problem, it's essentially one of these kind of two-pointer uh, problems where you need to maintain a current next, current head, list.head, right? Change list.head to swap it out to none. You have current head. You're going to point its next to whatever this one is. And then you essentially just advance, right? Until the very end. Okay. So that's kind of the concept of reversing it. Uh, this will be the list.head. And then in our code base here, I've gone ahead and implemented a list, a node, test. I'm running some tests right now. So let's go ahead and implement that push operation. Right, so push operation here. Uh, effectively, we just need to take a value mutable cell. Now he's going to be I32. Right. Okay, we need a new node. Where it's going to be a box value. Value is going to be value. Next. Get to that in a second. Self.head is going to be sum. No. Okay. So what do we need next to be? We need it to point to whatever self.head is at the moment. Uh, but if I try to do that right here, you're going to get this cannot move out of self.head. Um, so remember, we're not borrowing, we're not uh, assigning, we're assigning down here. Uh, but up here, we actually want to like sort of take that value from whatever self.head is and place it right now. The only way we can kind of do that is there's this function called take uh, on the option, which gives you the ability to take the value out of the option, leaving none in its place, right? This is the equivalent of saying standard man place, right? Move source into a destination, re returning the previous destination value, right? So we can say self.head, none. So those two are basically the same, right? So we're gonna do that here. So we're just gonna say take we'd expect at this point uh, we'd expect self.head to actually be none, right? So if we say that let's go ahead and create a list function here and I'm going to create a new list new add none, right? Okay List equals new, and we're going to say push five mutable four three two one, and I'm just going to assert cool dot head. So we're printing out that value. 
So you can see here, as we push on, the value of self.head is going to be none. Um, that's good. That's what we wanted. Right? Um, until it actually gets assigned. So the second function, obviously, we're going to need a pop. So in the pop operation, uh, effectively, all we want to do is say, um, well, we could say we have our current operation here. So remember, we're, we're taking whatever head is, we want to pop it off, and then have the next value be the new head, right? So we're just going to use that same operation here. Right, so self.head.take, right? So now it's brought into the current scope. And now that we have that, what we need is um, self.head to be node current next, right? Now remember this is a value. Um, so rather than do this sort of current unwrap, because we don't know if there actually is a value, let's uh, take this and put this in a match function. Right? Now we have that. None or none. Actual node. Right? Now we can... We know that by the end of it, return the value, right? And this is going to be sum. And we want self.head to be whatever next is. Okay. And this is fine because um, we're moving node.next into self.head, right? So we don't have any dangling references here. We've already taken self.head and put it to this scope. Alright, so now that we have that, this is our pop value. So we would expect, right, we had a couple of tests here. Two, three, four. Okay. We got our tests. Alright. Has passed. Awesome. Okay, so uh, next thing I actually want to do is want to implement um, a drop rate. So within Rust, you actually, and it's in the book, but let me show you here in a second. So dispose of the value, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, a better area. Right. Um, I actually drop. There we go. Okay. So when a value is no longer needed, Rust will run a destructor on that value. The most common way that a value is no longer needed is when it goes out of scope. Right. So because we are dealing with pointers, um, Rust isn't going to be able to efficiently. Uh, destructure our recursive structure here because what's going to happen is it's it's you would normally think of like a tail tail recursion uh, where it should be efficient but uh, we can't drop the structure until we can't drop the pointer until we've dropped the rest of the structure so that's not going to work very well so it, we we can leave it like this. Uh, but it would be better if we actually implemented our own uh, destructure operation. So let's go ahead and do that, right? By implementing that trait. List. Drop. There's our drop operation. Current. And we're just going to say head take 
file that sum in print. What is in? It is a box node. And we're just going to take current equals in dot next. Right? And that's just going to go round and round. And then this needs to be mutable. Very cool. So now we have our drop trait. Uh, the next thing I actually want to implement is an into uh, trait. So let's go back to our page here. So on the into trait, you have value to value conversion that consumes the input value. That's no problem. So what's a good example of this? So like, let's say you have a string that implements, string implements into vec you wait. If you have a vector of bytes, you can convert that. You convert a string by calling this dot into, and it'll convert it to that. So one way we'd want to do that here, let's go back to our code. So let's say here, Right, so we're going to say build this back. Don't want to pop. So we can declare a vector here of items, vec32. And then basically we want to do this, right? And that's going to allow us to easily verify that items is the same as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? current moment, this is not going to work because we haven't implemented our trait. You see here, trait found vector i32 from list. It's not satisfied, so you can do it in either way. So we're actually going to say implements uh, into right, same there. So into vec i32 or list Right, okay. Now we're just going to create our function here. Into need our current head. Oops. Now we can't just call pop, right? Because we're iterating over the items, we don't want to get rid of them. So we're gonna create our items. Do that new. While that sum current node and equals current head. Right, so now we have that. Now we push those values onto it. Value. And then current head. Now we have next. And then we just turn items. Okay. okay, awesome. So let's check our tests. Up the head cannot move out of here. Right, so then we have that issue up here into up the head drop trait. Ah, so we implemented a drop trait. So I'm going to borrow that. Okay, cool. Let's look at our tests. Awesome, so that works. All right, so far we've created our push, created our pop, we've converted it into a vector. So why don't we do the actual thing we set out to do, which is reversing our list here, our link list right. All right. So I'm gonna mute it, mutate it in place. Uh, rather than returning a another linked list. We could return another linked list, but I'd prefer to just do it this way. Okay, so remember what we talked about in our graph here. All right, we need a current.head and a current next, and we're working on a, a current next. So current head is going to be 
stuff that I had that take. And then we're just going to start looping over that, right? I'll let some. Head. Okay. Now we need to say current next equals current dot next. Take. We're going to reassign current dot node dot next to whatever that is. We're going to take this value here as well. So up here in this first line, we've taken it, we've got current head, placed it at none. We're basically going to do the same thing here. First iteration, uh, obviously you're replacing none with none, but that'll matter in the second iteration because we're reassigning self.head something new. Right. And now we're advancing our head. Our next. Okay, cool. So that'll do it for that. Well, we've reversed it. And the last thing we need to do here is create another test. Ideally, we would have created this test first. Uh, whatever. Not reverse. I'm going to run it first time with the wrong numbers, just so we can see. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is not the same. That's what we expect. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it passes. Awesome. All right. So that's pretty much it for reversing the linked list. We went over a few things here. Talked a little bit about, uh, briefly about boxes and Smart pointers. We didn't get too much into it because there's a lot more to smart pointers than this. Uh, we have our new, we have our push operation. Talked about replacing the value whatever head was by using the take operation. We reversed it. We implemented the drop trait, into vector, all that stuff. Awesome. All right, well, don't forget to subscribe and yeah, definitely see you in the next one.